Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. A few months ago on my channel, we took a look at the Pi Top 4. Now, personally, I'm a big fan of this. The kits that they're selling right now include the Pi Top with a 4GB Raspberry Pi 4 and the Foundation Kit. A lot of people did like this unit, but the price was a bit high at $299. Now, this one here came with everything you need. All you had to do was boot it up. It's got a built-in battery, built-in speaker, fan, everything you need for your Raspberry Pi to get up and running in a nice looking case is here. But again, price was $299. But luckily, PyTop has been listening to community feedback, and they're finally releasing their do-it-yourself kit. And this comes in at $99. You will have to provide your own micro SD card and Raspberry Pi 4, but it works with the 1 gigabyte model, 2 gigabyte model, 4, and the 8. And in this video, I'm going to be installing an 8 inside of here. But we have all of the same great features as the original PyTop 4 and a do-it-yourself kit. So let's go ahead and get this out of the box. We're going to go over the features and then I'm going to do a quick build on it. So first things first, we have this little accessories box on top and there's some extras in here like warranty information, user manual, and we also have some extra GPIO pins, screws, and a screwdriver in this little pack here. So like I mentioned, this is the do-it-yourself kit. You will have to provide your own Raspberry Pi, micro SD card, and charger for the unit but we have all of the same things that were built into the original Pi Top for this one. Like an OLED display up top here, we have a built-in battery with up to five hours of battery life, full access to the GPIO and the SD card, a safe reset and shutdown system, plus it has a fully integrated cooling system in here with an active fan. So before we jump into the assembly, I'm gonna give you a quick overview. On the front here, we have this little OLED display. This is gonna give us our battery life, CPU temperature, and you can program it for other things. We have full access to our GPIO up here, a built-in speaker that'll give us our system sounds, and it actually sounds pretty good out of this little case. We have a power switch, our audio jack, USB Type-C, Pi Top connector, and mini HDMI. We'll also have access to the Ethernet and three USB ports on the Raspberry Pi 4 once this is all assembled. And if you do want to add their foundation kit later on down the road, we have the connectors on the bottom for that. Assembly on the do-it-yourself version is actually quite easy. They do have full instructions over on their website. It's much harder than assembling, let's say, the official Raspberry Pi case where you just drop your Pi in. But we do have a lot of features built into this case, and it does need to take advantage of one of the USB 2.0 ports on the Pi, the display connector, and the camera connector, so it is a bit more involved than a regular old plastic case. Like I mentioned, I'm going to do a quick assembly here. Uh, they do have a full guide on their website, so don't quote me on any of this, but the first thing I do is pull off this connector. It's just a little snap lock connector. And underneath this connector, we do have a little silver screw that needs to come out and three more black screws on this GPIO PCB. And once we have those out, we will need to remove the fan with two more screws. And once we have all those screws removed, we can pull the fan and the PCB right off. As you can see on this PCB, we have two ribbon cables. One of those is going to go to the display connector, and the other one's going to go to the camera connector on the Raspberry Pi 4. We have that out. We can remove the bracketing system. It's two little Phillips head screws right here. And we can pull this bracket right out. So this is our Raspberry Pi bracket. We do need to pull this apart. There's four screws on the bottom. It's got a little custom PCB in here with some measurements on it, so you could reuse this after you're done. But it's pretty awesome how they have this set up. If we take a closer look here, you can see that we have our 3.5mm audio jack, dual micro HDMI ports, and our USB Type-C. The Raspberry Pi 4 is basically going to plug right in here. So now I'm just removing that little custom PCB from the bracketing system, and this actually acts as the cooler for the CPU. It sits on top of the CPU, and the fan attaches to it. And this is that little custom PCB I was talking about. And it's just a little extra thing that they've included. It's got the GPIO layout of the Raspberry Pi, a measuring edge on each side, and it also has a little wire gauge chart on it. I think this is pretty cool, and I'll probably use this down the road. All right, so now that we have everything apart, it's time to install the Raspberry Pi. As you can see here, this is one of the heat plates and it's got a big old thermal pad on the bottom. This actually draws out a lot of heat from this Raspberry Pi through the bottom of the unit, but we also have the top section, which does make contact with the CPU. Now I'm personally gonna go with a little bit of thermal paste here instead of a thermal pad. I'm just using some MX4, just a tiny drop will do you. So I got that taken care of. I'm going to grab the bottom half of the bracketing system, place the Raspberry Pi 4 inside of here, 
Make sure it's down nice and snug. And we'll grab the top half or the heat sink slash fan holder half and we'll place it right on top of the Raspberry Pi. As you can see, this dips down and does make contact with that CPU. It's made contact with my thermal paste. We'll need to put the four screws back in the bottom to hold this bracketing system on the Raspberry Pi. And now it's time to install the daughter board and the fan. We're actually almost done here. So it's a bit tight in here, but you can actually get it without removing anything. Both of these ribbon cables do come off. The white one's going to go to the camera port. The black one's going to go to the display port. I've been able to do this without taking the ribbon cables off of the daughter board. Just be very gentle with the connectors on the Raspberry Pi. They're push and pull connectors. Just make sure they're up. I'll place the white cable in the camera connector port. We'll lock it back down. And the black ribbon cable in the display connector. Same thing here. Pull them up, push them down to lock them in. And once we have those in, we're just going to line up the GPIO pins and push the daughter board down onto the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to go ahead and put my three black screws back into the daughter board here just to hold it down. Make sure you leave the silver screw out until we have everything assembled inside of the case. And now it's time for the fan. So this fan really only goes in one way. This is a centrifugal fan. Some people call it a squirrel cage fan. It pushes air out of this case here. So the outlet of the fan actually needs to be facing the rear of the Raspberry Pi. So it's going to push air out towards the rear of the Raspberry Pi. So I'll just go ahead and plug the fan in. There's two little fan connectors here. We're just going to go with the first one. Make sure the outlet of the fan is facing the rear. And I'll give you a quick look because the case itself actually has ventilation for that fan to get air out. So I've got everything mounted up. I've put my screws in the fan. We need to grab the little USB adapter. It's going to go in the lower USB 2.0 port on the Raspberry Pi. We're going to grab the Pi Top unit, and it's just going to slide right in here. Everything's going to plug right in. Your 3.5 millimeter audio jack, both micro HDMIs, USB Type-C, and that little left angle adapter for the bottom USB 2.0 port on the Pi. Just slides right in here, sits in here very nicely. And I'll finally mount the Pi in here. Don't forget that little silver screw right underneath the top ribbon cable. Overall, it's actually a pretty easy process. This is the first time I'm putting one together, and I can do it in about five minutes, maybe less off camera, but on camera trying to record everything, it took me about 10, so it's not that bad. I've got everything mounted up. I'm just going to run a quick double check. Fan, we have that ribbon cable, my GPIO, got all my screws in, and it's looking pretty good. Remember, that fan needs to exhaust out of the left-hand side of the pie top. Now we'll just grab the cover plate here. It snaps right on really easily. And we're done. Now, as for the software, you can run pretty much any operating system on here, but the PyTop OS that they offer on their website already has all the scripts for everything. The OLED, the fan control, the built-in speaker, I mean, all of the extras that this case provides, PyTop OS already has you covered, so that's what we're going to be going with. We're going to flash it to an SD card real quick. Very simple process. So installing PyTop OS is pretty much like any other operating system. First thing we need to do is download the OS. Links for this will be in the description. It's 2.3 gigs, so just give it a little time. But while this is downloading, we're going to grab another application that's going to allow us to easily flash this to the micro SD card. So from here, we're going to use Etcher. This works for Mac, Linux, and Windows. I'm going with the portable version. And once both of these are finished downloading, I'm going to place them on my desktop for easy access. So now have Etcher and PyTop OS downloaded. We're going to launch Etcher. I already have my micro SD card inserted into my PC's SD card reader. Flash from file. We're going to locate PyTop OS. Mine's on my desktop. We're going to select the target, which is going to be our micro SD card. And finally, we're going to flash. This is going to take a little bit of time flashing to the SD card, so just let it finish up. All right, so Etcher is finished flashing PyTop OS to the micro SD card. We can now move back over to the PyTop and get this thing booted up for the first time. 
So all I need to do now is insert the freshly flashed SD card, put the cap back on it, plug in my micro HDMI. This has a battery built in, so I'm not even going to plug in power. Hold the power switch for about two seconds. It's going to start booting up. You can see that OLED is working. So on the initial boot, you have to set up your language, your location. You can set up Wi-Fi and Bluetooth from there. I've done a video on it. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in checking that out. But it's a walkthrough, so it tells you exactly what you need to do. But once that's done, it'll boot directly into the PyTop OS. And this is actually based on Debian, so anything that you've been installing on Raspberry Pi OS will work here. I've installed Commander Pi, PyKiss, and Chromium Media Edition so we can view Netflix on this thing. I do have a more in-depth video for PyTop OS, and I'll leave a link for that in the description. But basically, I just wanted to see if the assembly went well, and obviously, everything's working here including the OLED screen up here. Now you might see it flickering a little bit. That's just from filming it with the camera to the naked eye. You don't see any of this. As you can see, we have a few different settings. I've gone to Wi-Fi. Tells me my Wi-Fi network and my IP address. We also have a CPU usage widget here and battery percentage. We can also go into the settings, enable SSH and VNC from here. So yeah, I really do enjoy using this little case, and I'm really glad that they're offering a cheaper do-it-yourself version. I put an 8 gigabyte Raspberry Pi inside of here. We got that built-in cooling system, built-in speaker, built-in battery. You can throw this right in your backpack and pretty much go anywhere with it as long as you have a display that you can connect it to. The monitor I'm using here doesn't have a speaker built in. All of this is coming from the speaker on the Pi Top 4, and it actually sounds really good. It sounds much better than some monitor speakers that I've seen in the past. I would actually like to set some kind of software up so we could do kind of a headless podcast player. That way we could use the OLED to navigate the playlist and things like that. I personally think that would be pretty cool and we wouldn't need a monitor for it to work. So yeah, I do need to spend a little more time with this. I do want to test out some other operating systems. I also want to test out some overclocking with that built-in cooling system. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to do 2 gigahertz all day, but that battery will suffer because we're going to be pulling a lot more power. So at 1.5 gigahertz, they're claiming you can get up to 5 hours. I'd say at 2, you'd be down to around 3 hours and 45 minutes. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the Pi Top 4 Do-It-Yourself Edition, I will leave links in the description. I will be doing some more testing, so if there's anything else you want to see running on the Pi Top 4, let me know in the comments below and I can add it into the next video. I'm 100% positive that we'll be able to get a ton of different operating systems up and running here. The only thing I'm worried about is the OLED script. Hopefully we can get a copy of that from Pi Top so we can get other operating systems working. And a lot of these operating systems are based on Debian, so it really shouldn't be hard to port everything over. But that's it for this one. All links for everything mentioned in this video are in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.